So the Long Array 5 is the laser that just won't die. About a year ago I looked at the 5 watt version of this laser and about 6 months ago I looked at this, the 10 watt version of this laser. Today I'm looking at the 20 watt version. And you might ask why I keep looking at it. Well, there's a couple of reasons. It's got a super solid airframe and it's not the most high-tech laser, but it's always reliable and it's a fantastic first laser for the money. So with that, let's get going. How's it going everybody? It's Steve here and welcome to the shop or welcome back if you're a regular viewer. Now, as I mentioned, I've looked at the longer Ray 5 laser a couple of times and the reason is simple. This laser, while, while the frame hasn't changed in at least a year, probably 18 months, and the cable handling is still kind of quirky, this laser has two things going for it, price and reliability. You can turn this laser on anytime you want and it will just work, and you're not gonna pay a fortune for it. And just for a quick comparison, this laser is $900. Now, if you compare that to a 20 watt uh, X-Tool D1, and there will certainly be people who say, well, there's no comparison because the drivetrain is, is quite, quite different. But if you compare them simply on price, this laser is substantially cheaper, hundreds of dollars cheaper than, than a D1 Pro, uh, an Acer P20, you name it. Pick your 20 watt laser and this laser is cheaper. And you might think there's big sacrifice there. And as I mentioned, it's not the most high tech laser, but there isn't a lot of sacrifice here and with the 20 watt laser they've added a couple of things and we're going to look at some of this stuff then we'll do uh, the usual kind of testing really put this laser through its paces and come out with a score at the end and see if it's it's not only fitting of the of the ray 5 family but how it compares to some of the other lasers that are are cost more or you know have have higher advanced technology and we'll see how it does so let's get started all right, let's do just a quick flyover of some of the things that have changed here. First thing you're going to notice is the laser module itself is much bigger than than the 10 watt version of this of this laser. Uh, they've also changed the mount on the back from more of this rounded piece like they have behind the rail uh, to this square pattern. And what that allows them to do is have a, a gradient scale here. So it's much easier to kind of align. The focus is still the same. Uh, slip a, an aluminum ingot under there and and do your focus. So that hasn't changed. So not everything is high tech here. They do have air assist, however, and that, that'll make a big difference for, for cutting. Now, one other thing they've added, if I can kind of slide down underneath here, is they've added limit switches, which is, you know, a welcome feature. Uh, both X and Y. So those are the the, the general overview features and uh, the rest of the laser is basically the same. So uh, with that we can kind of do, do some testing here and we'll see what we get. All right, time to look at some results here. So I always start with a, with a power versus speed chart and you can see the longer Ray 520 watt up here. Uh, reasonably good, uh, drops out a little bit on the 10% on the side, but creates a nice graduated scale. Even with uh, air assist, it's quite powerful at, at slow speeds at 100%. So you can see a bit of charring there. Uh, just for comparison, I put the the X-Tool D1 Pro 20 and the Acer P20 20, 20 watt lasers here. Uh, you can see the results are pretty similar to the X-Tool D1 Pro uh, and actually a little better even than the low end of the Acer P20. So, uh, so that's a good view of the power. Uh, start with a bit, of, a bit of some cutting here and uh, I did a, another, just cut a circle out of uh, half inch plywood and the goal here was to try and do it in one pass and unlike the uh, the Acer V35 which granted is almost twice as powerful as this 
the speed here was 80 millimeters per minute uh, versus versus 120 on the V35. So definitely it takes a little longer, but that's not surprising. It's a 20 watt laser versus a 35. And it did actually cut a very nice uh, punch out of a circle there. Uh, next, I did a bit of engraving. And you can ignore the top one here. What we're interested in is, is the bottom piece here. And you can see the engraving uh, is actually superb uh, given, given, I always use the same settings for these, by the way. And the, the Ray 520 watt is uh, comparable to the Laser Master 3 from an engraving performance perspective, uh, but it is actually a little bit better cutting. I did a, I haven't done an engraving on stainless steel recently, so I thought oh, I'll put a, an engraving on. And again, I use the same settings for, for all 20 watt lasers. Uh, this one is quite dark and actually, uh, it, if you can see, you may not be able to see it on camera, but it actually got very hot and bent the stainless steel. So I could have really powered that down quite a bit uh, compared to some of the other 20 watt lasers. And finally I did just a couple of fun things. I did a, a dog tag uh, engraving and it came out really nice. And I threw together a quick project here. This is just a business card box. Uh, took literally three minutes to cut this out on the Ray 520 and you get a nice little project. So if you're looking for something to just do quick cutting, this may, might be the, the laser for you. So there you go, the results are in and, and the longer Ray 520 watt produces some pretty awesome results. So you might actually want to consider it uh, in your shop or, or if you're you know, doing this as a hobby, uh, it would certainly be appealing there. Now, a couple of things that I really like about this laser. Uh, the current price is $899 US uh, and that includes the Air Assist pump. If they keep it at that price, uh, this is a no-brainer. I would I would pick this as as the first 20 watt laser I would buy if it was my first laser. Uh, however, the actual list price of this laser is $1199, which is the same price as an Xtool D1 Pro and comparable to an Acer uh, P20. Uh, at that price, if they if they push to the list price, then uh, you know, it's a toss up. If you want really great engraving, maybe this laser is still the right one. If you're in a maker business at that price, you're probably going to look at the Acer or the Xtool D1 Pro. So, you know, we'll leave it at that. Hopefully they keep the price where it is because it is a, it is a great price point. Next on the list here is performance. Uh, you saw that particularly engraving, photo engraving, uh, you really have to do nothing to your image. You plunk it down and, and say the, you know, the low end of your power is 0% or something close to that, and the high end is 100% and you'll get a spectacular image. Uh, cutting performance is also really good. Uh, not quite uh, uh, V35, eights or V35 performance, but uh, it's close. And uh, certainly, you know, if you don't mind that extra pass on a, on a you know, a piece of three quarter inch plywood, this laser will, will do what you want to do. And last on the pro side here, some of the new features that they've added, the improved uh, graduated scale on focus and limit switches are a really nice add. Air assist is a great, a great option to put in this laser as well. And you know, those are all things that you probably want in a laser, uh, you know, in, in 2023. Now on the con side, there were a couple of things I think that they could improve still. Uh, they had an opportunity to improve the focusing and fundamentally, although it's got a graduated scale, uh, the focusing is fundamentally the same. So if you're working with lots of different sizes of materials like I was for this review, you're refocusing all the time. And it's, it, you know, I, I think the time has come for really good focusing on diode lasers, so they could work on that. Uh, another uh, kind of pet peeve of mine is, is that shiny shield that they put on the front. I was very happy when Acer uh, finally got rid of that on their uh, V35, but here it is again on the, uh, on the Ray, Ray 520 watt. So something to, to think about there. 
Uh, and finally on the list here, this laser still doesn't have the latest technology, but it is reliable, which is, which is really important. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, anyway, that's the laser. Uh, do you want, do you want to buy one of these? Again, if you're in a maker business, this is probably not the right laser for you, but if you're, uh, you know, doing this as a hobby, maybe some small, uh, business rolling around, uh, you know, cash business, we'll say. Uh, yeah, it might be a, a good one, particularly if you're doing photo engraving. So with that, we can wind down here and uh, I put a link to a couple videos up above here. Go watch those and I'll see you over there uh, and get out there and make your world and I'll see you next time.